All right, we're back and talking even more Helldivers because after yesterday's Big Balance patch, of course, other things were broken. So now we've got a patch for the patch. There's also been some dev responses to some of the changes contained in that patch because not everything was seen as positive. We've got to check in on our major order because it is shifted ever so slightly. There's even an award dispatch from Helldivers HQ and a bit more. Welcome to the channel, it's Lieutenant Buzz Lightbeer, and in case you aren't yet a sub, consider hitting subscribe, and make sure to ring that notifications bell to receive all my future upload alerts, and let's get cracking on the latest from Helldivers. Okay, jumping straight into the thick of it and the current major order involving that three-pronged attack and defend of Malevolent Creek, Ubania, and Dropnir is currently sitting at 100% pegged in all three areas and huge high fives for everyone that has been doing their part to spread managed democracy. Now this one involved liberation campaigns and defense missions as well and we just need to hold on for the next 22-ish hours or so and those 40 medals are in the bag. But, as expected, Game Master Joel is doing what he does best and has also ignited a defense campaign in the neighboring Trigon sector on Vandalon 4, which, if we don't repel those automatons, could open up Malevolent Creek. Again, again, again. I don't know how many times it's been, but yeah, that's the current hotspot in automaton territory. And be forewarned, Vandalon 4 is a real slog fest, namely due to the terrain itself. Now you are essentially dropping onto Hoth, so expect frigid cold and deep snow, the first of which affects rate of fire, while that snow is going to slow you down considerably. And you might want to consider using the Muscle Enhancement Booster to try to counter that just a bit. Also, Vandalon 4 has intense blizzards that roll in, and these will further hurt your mobility and make it damn near impossible possible to see. The effects tab also says that visibility for the bots is moderately reduced, which I'm going to call a friendly bullshit on because we just got done rolling through a hell dive on Vandalon and the flares were being called in left and right in the middle of those blizzards. While we were not in combat and we were not firing our weapons, we couldn't see the bots, they couldn't see us. So Clearly, they have thermal or LIDAR, which was actually mentioned in my Helldiver Discord discussions, and shout out to everyone over there taking part in those. And if anyone at Arrowhead sees this video, we need the same in our Helldiver helmets. The bots seem to be able to see through whatever. Smoke from explosions, blizzards, other extreme weather, even fire. So let's get a future major order together where we have to capture automaton tech plants so we can get some of that awesome tech built into our visors. I'm all in for this idea. Now, who's with me? And the last few discussion items concerning our current orders. The Superstore has reset again, and we've now got the CE-74 Breaker Lightweight Armor with Engineering Kit with reduced recoil and plus two grenades. The CE-74 Breaker Helmet, the B-24 Enforcer Helmet, and of course the B-24 Enforcer Hybrid Medium Heavy Armor with Fortified for reduced recoil and 50% resistance to explosive damage. Today's daily order is you're going to need to knock out 200 kills with the Stalwart. Probably best to hit a bug campaign for that one. And finally, we've got a new bit in the Dispatch tab along with a tweet from Helldivers HQ. Now, since we've finally taken back Malevolent Creek, and considering the significance of that planet, here's the new Dispatch. The president of Super Earth has officially recognized this day as Malevolent Creek Memorial Day. Every year on this day, Super Earth citizens will unite for a full three minutes of their lunch break and solemn remembrance of those who gave their lives to free Malevolent Creek. In addition, all Helldivers have been issued a special commemorative cape so they may carry the memory of their fallen companions into battle. I've got to say that Arrowhead has really embraced this storyline of the game and how they weave in the lore is just done so very well. Now, I saw this dispatch and spent a good few minutes looking for some sort of new cape, but it hasn't arrived yet, at least not for me. Kind of like those medals we are due from the previous Major Order Liberation of the Creek. But we also did just get this tweet from Helldivers HQ 
echoing the dispatch and giving us a look at the Fallen Heroes Vengeance Cape, which I assume will be hitting our inventory sometime soon. Now, what's awesome to see are some of these responses to the tweet, including from PlayStation UK and Opera GX. And it just gives you an idea of how widespread the love for the Helldivers franchise has become. Moving along, and we need to backtrack to yesterday's Big Balance patch, and I need to apologize to anyone who watched the video I posted yesterday quickly, running through all of those changes. As many of you pointed out, my math was way off, and I honestly don't know what happened because math is kind of my thing, and I don't normally fumble that bad when it comes to rattling off percentages, but... I was just stumbling and bumbling throughout that video. I mean, who knows? Maybe I was overly tired. Who isn't these days? But anyways, it was a mess and should not have happened. Now, as we look over the changes Arrowhead installed into the live game, so this is how the current game build plays, I'd like to know how you are responding to it. Let me know in the comments section because I'm honestly interested in your feedback. I've had a chance to go in and get some more time with the changes, the weapon buffs, the armor buffs, even that enemy explosive damage stack bug that was fixed, and it feels, at least to me, that the game's in a pretty good spot right now. Stability aside, which is a whole other topic I'll discuss in a moment, but you know, the weapon balance, the mission changes, and the stratagem tweaks seem to be solid. That is, unless you were a slugger diver and your sniper shotgun took the brunt of the beatdown from yesterday's patch. I personally did not use the slugger that much prior to yesterday, so I had to reach out to members of our Discord who did, and the general consensus was that it was a very strong weapon, especially when you were using it incorrectly. And yesterday's changes kind of brought it back more in line for that weapon archetype it is listed as a shotgun. Now, I'm more of a breaker badass myself, but there's this alternate discussion going on right now concerning the Slugger, because not only did they nerf the damage, but the Stagger and Demo Force was also reduced, which is kind of counterintuitive to it being, well, a shotgun, a point this Reddit post with over 8,100 upvotes echoes. Why nerf Stagger instead of damage drop-off? Excellent question. I mean, if the intention is to turn the slugger back into a shotgun, okay. Maybe hit that max damage a bit. Maybe add in more damage drop-off to push players to use it in close. But then, why hit stagger? Why touch demo force? Now, early on in this slugger nerf discussion, Alexis, the bringer of balance over at Arrowhead, actually responded to this question with... The truth is, the Slugger was just hands down the best sniper rifle out there, which is not fitting for, you know, a shotgun. But again, the question of what was nerfed and the intention behind those changes just doesn't add up for me. Again, I'm not much of a Slugger user, so I ask because I am actually genuinely trying to understand the thought process here, but at least on paper, it doesn't make sense. Anyways. Next up, we need to talk about some of those awesome stealth changes to hit the live game yesterday. And some, like this new automaton walker, are just <laughs> effing insane. These things are beasts. I finally got to see my first one this morning in the flesh, and it was literally a nightmare to deal with, especially on Helldive difficulty. There's also those wild new flying gunships, and of course, we got the tripling of the level cap from 50 up to 150, and someone has gone in and identified all the new ranks and titles, starting off with Fleet Commander at level 60, Admirable, Admiral, crazy name there, Commander, Galactic Commander, Hell Commander, General, 5-star general, 10-star general, I have no idea how that's even possible. And then, in an interesting turn, the last two ranks are private and super private, so a bit of trolling there at max rank. And finally, we need to talk about the game's stability, which every time Arrowhead drops in these big patches, things break. But yesterday's update seems to have wrecked more havoc than usual. Now, the devs have released a patch to the patch early this morning aimed at addressing those pesky crash issues, but this one is strictly to fix a crash that happens when you access the acquisitions menu, which doesn't happen while you're in a mission. But there's still a very clear and present danger for crashing in-game, especially when you're at mission's end or either extracting or in the dropship heading back to orbit and the game just kind of chugs and 
throws you out. Those last two, by the way, are soul crushing because you just devoted close to 40 minutes of time to get the mission completed and you lose everything. All that XP and any samples you've collected as well. I've also started to crossplay a lot more with players on PlayStation 5, you know, because I main a PC, and I'm hearing that the game is giving them all sorts of fits. Again, and I say this every few videos, I love to see the new major orders. I love to see the war bonds and everything that Arrowhead is doing right when it comes to this live service model, but the crashes have to be a priority, along with the friends list issues, which I'm sure they are. I just wish they could speed it up, if you know what I mean. All right, that's it for today. Remember to leave me some feedback concerning yesterday's Big Balance patch. Remember to hit subscribe and ring that notifications bell to receive my latest upload alerts. All my social links, including Twitter and Discord, can be found in the video description, along with an open invite link to my awesome Helldivers Discord community. We've been staying really active in the discussions channels, and of course, the LFG area and free voice channels are super popular. Thank you so much to the nearly 214,000 of you for hitting subscribe and sticking with me. I am planning to start up my coverage of other titles again very soon, so expect to start seeing some ARC, Division, and Starfield content make its way back into the upload rotation. Until the next one, this is Lieutenant Buzz Lightbeer, signing off.